Most people want to be able to run their portable power station on their full-size refrigerator should the power go out for a significant amount of time. Now, if you're one of these people and you happen to be in the market for a newer refrigerator, you might be asking yourself what kind should you buy or, or what you should look for uh, for this kind of situation. In this video, I'm going to be giving you my opinion about that and also I'll be talking a little bit about a three-part video series that I have that will uh, help you learn how to figure out what you can run on your portable power station and how long you can run it. In my opinion, the best refrigerator to buy in this kind of situation would be one that has an inverter compressor because it's more efficient than a standard compressor and there are no surge watts. There are no surge watts because it never turns off. The inverter is always on. It's like a gas pedal. When it doesn't need to cool, it throttles down, low wattage drop. When it needs to cool, it throttles up just to the level it needs to in order to cool. It's more efficient. Um, or, or like a rheostat, maybe you could look at it that way. Even when I first plugged this refrigerator in, I didn't see a huge draw of power. Now, these portable power stations could not run my GE refrigerator with a standard uh, compressor I had before this one. Uh, but both of these can actually run my refrigerator. In fact, this one right here, this uh, uh, a River 600, 288 watt hour battery, is actually running it right now. Not for long, more than likely, but uh, I'm going to run this and at the end of the uh, video I'm going to find out how long we were able to run it. The LG calls their inverter a, a, a linear inverter. Samsung, I think, has one called a digital inverter. And I imagine there are others as well. I don't know. I just know about the LG. So if you want more information about the LG, just see in the description below uh, more information about that. There are two numbers that will determine whether or not you can run your portable power station on your full-size refrigerator. The first would be surge watts. The second would be the maximum running watts. In a 24-hour period, your refrigerator is going to demand different amount of wattage. You just want to know what's the maximum wattage it demands at any given point because it has to be within the range of um, your continuous watts on your portable power station. I tested this one and it turned out it was 383 watts and that's when uh, it was on defrost. LG says it will defrost uh, between two and three times 20 to 60 minutes uh, you know, in a 24 hour period. The label says inside this refrigerator 355 watts but I measured 383 and this happened before with another refrigerator I had so the actual running watts maximum watts was greater than the label. So if, if you're shopping for one, I would add 50 to 100 more watts on top of whatever the label says as some cushion. Also, multiply the amps and volts. And if that number is higher, then use that one. So let's go ahead and take a look at the label in this refrigerator. You can see the defrost watts, 355. And when I tested it, it was 383. So it's a good idea to add on 50 to 100 watts uh, on a label to make sure you're going to be within the uh, continuous running watts of your portable power station. Now multiply the amps by volts so you can uh, because if that number is higher you want to use it. In this case our uh, volts in our home that would be 120 times 3 amps so we have 360 which is greater than that. So I'm using 360 and then I'm going to go ahead and add uh, uh, 50 to 100 on that to see if it's within my 600 watts on my portable power station, and it is. There's a third number that's very important to know. It has nothing to do with whether you can run your portable power station on your refrigerator. It has to do with how long you can run your refrigerator on your portable power station. And that's watt hours per hour on average. Now in that 24 hour uh, period of time I was talking about earlier, in the different wattages, you just want to know what the average is. What's the average watt hours per hour that it uses. And the way you find out, or the way I do, is I use a kilowatt meter. And I highly recommend one of these. And under the description below here, you can uh, learn more about it. But uh, it's really easy to use. And my three-part video series that I'm going to recommend um, will we'll show you how to use it as well. It, it is very easy. Uh, it turns out that my, my refrigerator uses about 84 watt hours per hour on average. Now, it might actually be a little more efficient than that because when I tested it, it was brand new and the little gasket was folded and it was leaking air. So uh, I fixed that and uh, so I'm using the 84 watt hours anyway for this example. Most people take that watt hours per hour on average and divide it into the battery capacity. Uh, in the case of this one, the retail version anyway, 
it would be a 720 uh, watt hour battery and they would just divide 84 into that and that tells you how many hours it will run uh, but that's not all that accurate necessarily because the portable power station has to use some of the battery to run itself so there's a there's a, a matter of efficiency here how efficient is your unit so that's something you might want to do if you have a portable power station research what is the efficiency it's called inverter efficiency or battery efficiency or, or, or whatever you want to know how many watt hours do you get to use that's what matters so uh, let me show you an example this is my ecoflow delta 1300 it has a battery capacity of 1260 watt hours if i were to divide 1260 by the 84 watt hours per hour on average my refrigerator uses i would assume that i had 15 hours of runtime but that's not true because this is 80% efficient. I've tested it. So I multiply 80% or 0.80 times the capacity, which is 1260. And I learned that I only have about a thousand usable watt hours available. So when I divide a thousand divided by 84, I find out I really only have about 12 hours of runtime. So it makes a difference. So two things, you want to know watt hours per hour on average, but it's also good to know the efficiency of your unit. Now, I have a, a video right here that shows you how to test your own, uh, or you, if you want to learn more about this in detail, uh, go ahead and, and, and check out under the description below the three-part video series I have. The retail version of this unit is called the EcoFlow River Pro. It'll say River Portable Power Station EcoFlow Pro. And the battery capacity of the retail version is 720 watt hours. When you do the math and, and consider the 80% efficiency on this, uh, you get about seven hours runtime if I'm just running my refrigerator. The extra battery you can get with this, it would extend that to 14 hours. And with solar panels, you can run this all day if it's sunny out, and then you have 14 hours at night. This is my EcoFlow River. It has a battery capacity of 288 watt hours, 230 watt hours usable. Now, I, I, in my opinion, I don't think it's a good idea to use watt hours per hour on average when you're trying to determine how long a battery this small will run a refrigerator. Because I can't guarantee when the defrost is going to uh, kick on and, and draw that 383 watts. So um, it's, it's, in my opinion, use the watt hours per hour on average for batteries maybe that are about 700 watt hours or, or more uh, when you're trying to determine how long you can run a refrigerator. And the, the next best thing to do is what I'm doing right now. I'm just running it and see how long it lasts. But uh, if, if it, whatever it, it, it turns out to be at the end of this video, we'll find out. Um, if I did that again, it may not be the same because I don't know if it's gonna, with the when the refrigerator will run those defrost watts. Now, LG says they do it every, or when you first plug it in, it'll be six to eight hours. But I, I plugged it in after it had been running though uh, already. And it kicked on in an hour and a half. So uh, it's unpredictable is, is, uh, is all I can say if you're using a smaller battery. Uh, if, you really, if you can't afford anything more, then try running it maybe a few times until the battery goes almost uh, dead. If it's, if it's safe for your unit to do that, you wanna find out. And, uh, and see, see if it's pretty consistent. But otherwise, um, stick with using watt hours per hour on average for a larger battery. I would say 700 watt hours or, or greater. Well, I've been running my EcoFlow River for exactly one hour. The uh, defrost watts kicked on, 383 watts, in 30 minutes, right after I plugged the, this in. So um, that's why it's not a good idea to use watt hours per hour on average when you're determining whether or not you can run your portable power station on your refrigerator with a small battery. It's just not practical for that. Uh, when we have like, what, 1% left, so it's about to kick off. I need to plug this into the wall now. Now, if you're not already in the market for a, a, a new full-size refrigerator, I'm not suggesting you run out and buy a new one uh, for your portable power station. You might just consider buying maybe a, a DC-powered refrigerator, a small one, or just a smaller, more efficient refrigerator um, so that if the power goes out, you can just transfer your food to that. LG had some problems with their linear inverter compressor uh, a while back, and there were some lawsuits. And I read through those and I read reviews and I, um, I'm confident that things have been resolved and, uh, and I'm happy with what I bought. So, but I wanted you to be aware of that so you can do your own research as well. 
I don't know what kind of system you have, portable power station. I don't know if it would work on a refrigerator. But uh, so the point of the video is to tell you, in my opinion, uh, what would give you the, the best odds. And that's the kind of refrigerator I think that would give you the best odds, one with an inverter compressor. Now, if you want to know more about what you can run on your portable power station, how long you can run it, and be prepared for long-term power outages, check out the three-part interactive instructional video series that I have. It's in the description below. And I'll put it right here, a link here for the first one. Uh, it, it, and if you do exactly what I say in that and buy a binder, you'll end up downloading some papers and you'll have a summary after you do your work. Uh, with all of your appliances, uh, with the watt draw, the, the uh, watt hours per hour on average, I'll show you how to do all of this. So if the power goes out, you'll have everything at your fingertips. You'll know exactly what you can run, how long you can run it, what combinations of things you can run. I have uh, you know, uh, diagrams for you for solar panels to download. Uh, there'll be tests, questions, you, you name it. It's, a, it's an instructional series. A uh, protocol on a uh, power outage you can download. So check that series out. If this video has been helpful and, uh, and useful and you think others might uh, uh, benefit from this, please share it, uh, like it, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a great day.